Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday night. It is your Earthmaster out here about 9.57 p.m. California time, June 17, 2024. Latest activity here on the globe shows, uh, let's see what we got, a little 1.8 into the area of the big island of Hawaii. Did see some movement stretching up down here across the uh, northern edge, it looks like, of the Middle America Trench with a five-pointer coming in earlier this evening. We'll watch for some further enhancement here across this region in the uh, days ahead. Uh, I want to check out Cascadia Trimmer here real quick, see what we got for today's trimmer. And uh, only 264 epicenters of trimmer. This is a, uh, about half of what we've seen yesterday. So for now, it looks like maybe things are calming down slightly. But uh, this has been continuing for quite a while in terms of trimmer count. And uh, roughly about a month ago is when this trimmer uptick occurred with, um, let's see what we got for a total tally so far, almost 11,000 trimmers, mainly along the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, but uh, just recently catching up here across the northern end. Well defined, you can see exactly where that subduction zone is. Uh, no further earthquake activity up here across the Cascadia for now, but we'll continue to watch that. Uh, minimal activity across the Pacific Northwest with a handful of smaller microquakes. Northern California did see a 2.4 just outside of the Lake Almanor area near Chester. Coming in about 6 kilometers deep for that quake. And a handful of other quakes there around the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Really not a whole lot of other activity to mention out here uh, in the southern part of the state for now. I uh, did see some twos and uh, some smaller quakes out there. A little bit of microquake activity on the Brawley seismic zone, but really no swarming going on for now. Again, we'll continue to watch that area as well. Texas area getting hit pretty nicely out here with these oil fields in Oklahoma as well. One lonesome earthquake out there in the New Madrid seismic zone from earlier this morning. The same for New Jersey. An early morning quake out there for 1.9 now there's that earthquake activity stirring up out here off the coast of Mexico. Looks like it is on a fracture zone here. You can see the oceanic crust um, divergent boundary out here. Quite a few of them. South of the Gulf of Mexico. So we'll continue to watch areas upstream here. See if anything develops in terms of uptick and activity. The big island of Hawaii. Uh, that one lonesome earthquake there. Coming into the Kilauea Volcano at 1.9. Let's double check, see what we got here for the latest information from the USGS in regards to the uh, volcano activity there, which sits at a yellow and advisory, by the way. There's that little quake here on the southeastern rim of Kilauea Volcano. Now the deformation data out here, let's see what we got. We have been going up and down a little bit over the past couple days. Looks like we're starting to trend upwards once again. And we are now at the highest level seen since 2018. There across the summit and the upper uh, east rift zone. So, uh, just a waiting game. Watch and, uh, watch and wait to see what happens here. No changes though, for now. And I think, I think we'll see some uh, elevated earthquake activity just as uh, things are starting to change out there, whether it's a magma displacement somewhere or uh, an eruption. Uh, 4.0 there to the Lucian Trench early this morning. Aside from that, not a whole lot of major activity to take note of there across the Alaska area. Uh, most of the movement. Newer activity today kicking up around Taiwan. And I did have a little bit of activity here into the Japan region this morning. See your clustering of quakes out here across the uh, Papua New Guinea area. Some fours and fives quite active out here across the western region of the uh, Filipino plate down through the Papua New Guinea area. And New Zealand, oh yeah, goodness, New Zealand looks a little clutter down here. So let's see what we got. Let me go over here to the EMSC model. Take a look at the New Zealand area down here. I guess I could go this way a little bit quicker. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, quite the uptick here, mainly across the North Island area. In a linear fashion, of course, the subduction zone extends down here or off here to the right of the North Island region. Uh, a couple of these quakes fairly recent, uh, in, at least in the last 24 hours. A little bit of swarming going on under here. Uh, it looks like they're on the North Island side. 
Uh, let me go check out the GeoNet servers there, the uh, actual folks that monitor the uh, activity across New Zealand. And we'll see what's going on here. Got to go to the all magnitudes to see uh, the map. 2.4, 2.0, 1.8. Couple other smaller quakes out here. Um, the majority of these, there's one deep one, but the majority of these quakes here look fairly shallow. There's another deep earthquake there, but uh, well, I guess it's a mixed bag of deep and shallow earthquake activity. Definitely indicative of uh, some adjustment going on there across the North Island area. Let's see what we got for the earthquake drums. I don't think we got anything major going on. But with this heightened activity here, there's some of those, some of those threes kicking up there across the North Island area. Uh, just definitely got to be on guard. It looks like this took place roughly about 12 hours or so ago. As far as this uh, little increasing movement there across North Island, New Zealand. South Island area looks really quiet. Not a whole lot stirring up out there, but uh, mainly some adjustment going on across the area of the uh, Hikarangi subduction zone there. With some of that deeper activity being triggered underneath the North Island area. Uh, let's see, anything else major going on out here? South America area, handful of quakes, nothing of major concern. Fours and fives are quite common out there across the area. 5.6 coming in earlier this evening. That's going to be uh, this earthquake right here. USGS reporting this as a 5.5, 104 kilometers underneath the area. That's going to be into the portion of the Peru Chile Trench here. Major subduction zone that sits offshore here. And uh, that area can produce some big time earthquakes. Over here across the uh, Ionian Sea, a four pointer coming in. Uh, that was from late last night, just just about ready to drop off the 24 hour threshold there. As uh, far as newer activity goes, looks like um, looks like any given day, any other day out here, some threes and twos, some movement out in Turkey. No unusual activity to take note of there for now. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet as far as any uh, major earthquake movement goes there. Uh, let's check out the live from Iceland real quick here, see what's going on there. And then we'll check out some space weather and uh, some fires that have been popping up out of the blue out here in Northern California. Look at that. Look at that volcanic gas is just getting sucked down in there. Almost looks, looks like we're watching a uh, reverse video, but it's not. That is crazy. You guys see that? That's. I don't watch this too often, so this is actually the first time I've seen these volcanic gases being sucked back into the crater area. That is crazy. So uh, anyway, it definitely looks like we're remaining active out here in terms of the eruption, ongoing eruption here across the Iceland area. As uh, far as any new update goes there across the uh, Icelandic Met Office, well... Looks like it's about four days old here. Really not seeing anything uh, of new update. All right, space weather activity here. Uh, does show a little bit of in-flare activity earlier. Just seen a small grade in-flare, and that was actually from a sunspot over here on the western limb, one of these areas. Probably more likely a 3709 there. Uh, being the culprit, I did see that flaring. Uh, this area right here, the one that's currently facing us, it uh, you know it it doesn't look super complex. It does look like maybe this is going through some type of change once again, uh, with a little bit of uh, redevelopment here in the core. That's when things could start getting a little bit more amplified there in terms of the flaring potential, but. Uh, I just have to watch and wait and see. It is going to be, uh, you know, partly off of the Earth-facing side uh, as far as a direct lineup goes. But uh, I'm sure if anything does blast off from there, it would uh, be geo-effective. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that sunspot. A couple other ones here just north. Uh, I'm really not too impressed with these. And there's not a whole lot there across the eastern limb. As far as anything coming out around the far side of the sun, well... We're going to have to watch um, 3697 here. It is getting closer. This here is the western limb over here, but this is a split image, eastern limb. 
Uh, you just see a, a barely peak of the 3697 there. That's a former sunspot that produced many, many X flares here over the last several weeks, including the historic Aurora events there last month. Does look like it's still remaining a sizable sunspot, but we'll have to watch that in the days ahead and see if we can get a glimpse of it as far as the magnetic complexity goes. Uh, another old sunspot up here. Looks like it's about ready to crest the eastern limb. Might get a look at that um, maybe tomorrow. Just barely a, glimpsing, uh, uh, a glimpse of it once it crests over here across the eastern limb. But I'm kind of curious about 3697. It's going to be 3691 here. That sunspot we'll see here maybe tomorrow. Uh, 3697 still looks sizable. That's for sure. All right, overall flare threat does show a 10% chance for X-flare and flare at 55, C-flare around 99% chance or so. And uh, not a whole lot of roars there in the in the uh, forecast for now. Um, so yeah, what's going on with these fires? We got some big fires starting up out of the blue. I was covering this earlier. Far as the um, sites fire goes, I was out here just outside of Willows live streaming in this direction, just for the folks wondering. Um, and it was a considerable large pyrocumulus clouds. They were getting some towers building up from this fire. Uh, when I was live streaming there, it was at 13, uh, maybe 1,500 acres. The latest update here uh, that was put out about an hour or so ago shows 4,463 acres. So this thing has doubled in size since I was out live streaming earlier uh, this evening. This is all moving to the south a little bit. These are power outages here in the yellow. And this is the areas that are burned. Been seeing a lot of tankers fly overhead here. Uh, a lot of aerial uh, firefighting tankers. And that fire started just up out of the blue. And, um, you know, there is there is some roads out here. Might be some houses. Um, trying to think here. The, the exact area, you know, it looks like it was just off the road. So who knows what the... Uh, what the main fire starter was but hopefully they get into it and uh, figure out what caused it it is headed generally south here clear lake uh, obviously down here not headed in that direction anywhere at all but and and there's a little gap here there's really there's like a little valley up here i don't think it's going to stretch further up into the mountains but uh Anyway, these little fires are starting up out of the blue. We got one north here in Redding as well. That shows only 45 acres, uh, but this one grew really fast. Uh, there is no containment on it yet. There's definitely some evacuation orders, and this is uh, one of the cam views from the uh, PG&E alert wildfire cams showing that uh, smoke and whatnot. There was actually two fires that started up out there. Uh, and these are very minimal clouds compared to pyrocumulus clouds compared to what we've seen earlier. We've seen these things just towering, indicative of some in, incredible heat, a lot of fuel being burnt all at once, a lot of dryness, as you can see. Um, a radio station antenna down there. Um, so, yeah, you know, fires starting up out of the blue. There's one down here, 5,000 acres, a pretty big one down here. Um, Let's see here. I believe it's this, this one called the Post Fire, south of Bakersfield, kind of up around the Grapevine area, if I remember right. Fifteen thousand acres here. You can see how far it's burned. That's uh, you know, north wind out here definitely uh, driving these fires pretty rapidly. Eight percent containment here on this fire at fifteen thousand six hundred and ten acres. Uh, it does look like it's headed towards this reservoir area. So, I mean, it's, it, you know, California does get some wildfires, that's for sure. But it seemed like they all started up out of the blue all over the place. Down in the Sacramento Valley. It's not only up in the mountains here, but uh, San Joaquin Valley, excuse me, down here. And uh, even some along the coast over here. You know, out in the middle of, uh, in the middle of nowhere. Got these fires starting up suspiciously. 15 acres. But uh, anyway, we'll continue to watch these. I'm hoping it's not going to be a bad fire season, but uh, it's looking likely that it is starting off pretty bad. It's only June. 
If you look at, uh, wow, if you look at the majority of the West out here, there's a lot of wildfires all over the place. Up in uh, Oregon, Washington, New Mexico, Arizona, big fires starting out here. Crazy, right? Absolutely crazy. Uh, this app is called watchduty.org. It's a really cool app you can get for your phone as well as your desktop like I'm using here right now. So uh, you can keep track of all the fires. You can add specific layers on here if you want, far as thermal hotspots, um, historical fire perimeters, like uh, it does show on here, the uh, campfire that happened back in, um, I can't remember what year, up in Paradise, uh, and the uh, Dixie Fire. That was a big one that burned up a lot, including the town of... Uh, of um, Oh, what's that name? Greenville. Yeah, yeah that, that was scary. That burnt that whole town down. That was not good. But uh, anyway, watchduty.org is the name of this app. Seismograph stations out here look pretty quiet, pretty calm. Uh, we do have some type of tropical development potential coming up here into the Gulf of Mexico. There is uh, some... Some hur or, uh, not hurricane, but tropical storm warnings that are in place here, roughly down through the Mexico area, up into the extreme south area of Texas. In the yellow, as you can see, tropical storm watches, excuse me, tropical storm watches, uh, and that's going to be due to potential tropical storm one. And uh, not really expected to be anything big or powerful, but uh, it is forecasted to go. Looks like in potentially a couple different directions. Mainly the models are forecasting here towards the uh, Mexico area, then scooting off west into the Pacific. But there is obviously a little potential here of it clipping the uh, southern, extreme southern Texas area. Not really expecting one. It'd be lucky if it gets into category one. Most of the speeds here are predicting around uh, 35 to maybe up to 50 miles per hour or knots here. So it's, uh, yeah, it's getting into that time of year. That's going to be it down here. As we put the GFS model into motion here, you can see it. Eh, very weak, disorganized system there. Uh, and then as we head a little bit deeper into June, there's some more tropical development. And uh, we'll just have to watch that. This high pressure out here where it's at can direct and steer uh, tropical systems right there into the Gulf of Mexico. So... That's a big no-no out there. Uh, it might clear the uh, the eastern portion of the country, but this type of pattern, the uh, clockwise circulation here around the high pressure can take these storms and uh, put it right in there into the Gulf of Mexico. So, All right, I'm out of here, folks. I'm tired. Been a heck of a day. Have yourself a good one, and we'll catch you guys back out here for the Tuesday morning update. Take care.